So, in the previous lecture, uh, we discussed breakthrough analysis, right, or the dynamic response in a packed bed collar. So, we said that there are two ways of you know doing the experiments on adsorptions or test on adsorptions. One is the batch, and one is the flow. Today, we begin with uh, stage-wise operations. So, we have adsorption. and we are looking at stage wise operation. Okay. So, in stage wise operations, essentially we have some uh, container, where you bring say the solvent L s if you call it, or you have solutions, it contains certain amount of solute. So, let us say L s is solute free basis. So, solvent you have say kg per second, you can also have a batch operation. That means, we are talking in terms of how many times. So, we can work on kg per second or we can just work in kg. So, it is a question of choosing a proper basis, basis here. So, you have solvent and say the mole fraction is y 0 kg of solute per kg of solvent. Okay, so, this solute could be say organics, say color or certain dissolve organics in water. Okay. So, in now you bring in contact with some solid. So, let us say the solid is flow rate is S s. Now, this is also again kg per second or if you are doing in some batch. So, you have you can have the basis of kg as well. Now, the sol this adsorbents could be fresh. So, let us say uh, if the solid concentration in the solid phase is x 1. So, we have k g of color or the solute per k g of say solid. So, again we are here we are defining uh, solid free basis. Okay. So, this is x 1 here, this could be 0 very small quantities. So, you bring essentially a solvent at jar bait. Okay. So, at jar bait will be this solute dissolve in this aqueous phase some some uh, liquid here. You bring in contact with adsorbent, adsorbent may be fresh or may contains very small amount of on the solute. Then you bring in contact and finally, you withdrawing this treated solvent or feed and here also you can have say this is L s. So, L s will remain the same, because you are working on solute free basis. So, assume that the solvent is not getting adsorbed on this solid. So, let us say you have charcoal or you have carbon. So, in principle some water will also get adsorbed here, but let us assume that L s uh, remains same here. Now, this L s uh, will also have certain units. So, you have y 1 which is also k g solute per k g of And now, this adsorb, uh, adsorbent will pick up the solute. So, here you have the flow rate as S s. So, again it is the solute free basis amount of adsorbent will remain the same and this will have a concentrations. Let us say we call it here if you call it x 0, let us say this is x 1. So, x 1 will be k g solute per k g of solute. So, notice this nomenclature here has given the textbook uh, x 1 or x 0, but essentially this is nothing but what we have used earlier also q uptake. All right. So, how much amount of milligram per gram is the most common unit. So, how much milligram of solute has been adsorbed per gram of adsorbent. So, that is the most common unit uh, used here. We are of course, using here kg per kg. And here, if you talk of the isotherms, so then you have here you have C or partial pressure of the solute in the gas phase. So, this C would be milligram of solute per liter of solutions. And here, this you have partial pressure say atmosphere. You can also work on the mole fractions in the gas phase. So, given fixed T, you have these isotherms available. So, much of C you have Q. So, instead of working on this C and Q, 
uh, in this problem, let us say we are working on x and y. So, these are all solid free bases, you know the advantage, uh, we have said earlier also, the operating line based on the solid free mole fractions, they remain linear, they remain constant. So, that is the advantage working on this. So, let us come back to this, we have brought this adsorbate in contact with the adsorbent, we have the treated feed and we have the spent solid. So, this is your spent solid. So, charcoal has picked up certain amount of solid here. So, if you make a material balance or a species balance, you have L s y 0 minus y 1. So, the concentrations has been brought down from y 0 to y 1 by this charcoal which has picked up. So, let us say this S s is a fluorate kg, it has picked up uh, char color or whatever organics uh, you have as a contaminant present as a contaminant x 1 minus x 0. All right. So, essentially if you want to plot on this y versus x on graph, so this is will be your let us say equilibrium curve. So, all we have done, we have converted the q versus c right in terms of y versus x. So, this is k g of solute per kg of solvent. So, we are plotting like this y and x is kg of solute per kg of solid. All right. So, we have only one stage let us say. So, we start with some y 0. So, that is a concentration in the liquid phase or the gas phase, very large amount of y 0 and you have brought in contact with a very nearly pure adsorbents, which does not contain uh, any color or any solutes here. In principle, there will be very small amount here. Okay. So, if you look at the balance equation, which we had L s y 0, say minus y equals S s and you have x minus x 0. So, y equal to m x plus c you can make a notice that the slope will be negative. So, this is operating line equations it should be minus S s by L s, the slope of this curve. So, the concentration of this liquid phase will decrease and the solid phase concentration will increase in this directions till we hit the equilibrium. So, if you have the ideal stages and we are assuming that two streams have spent enough time, then the spent solid and the treated feed will have concentrations which are in equilibrium or given by this equilibrium curve. So, essentially we have come down to x 1, that is the lowest you can come, come down or that is the lowest and that is the maximum you can increase solid phase concentrations uptake and the lowest you can come down is y 1. So, y 0 to y 1 and x 0 to x 1 here. Okay. So, essentially what we are saying here again that all these isotherms which we used uh, as q equal to k c to the power 1 over n, if you talk of friendly isotherms. So, we said that is the most common isotherm from engineering point of view, where we relate q in terms of c, this can be converted into y equal to m x to the power n. So, from thermodynamics classically we have obtained, we have some certain data which we did from the batch experiment or the column experiment, we fitted with this line, we got the equation q equal to k c to the power 1 over n, we have converted into y equal to m x to the power n. So, that we can plot operating line equations on the same plot and operating line is a straight line, because we are working on the solute free basis solute free basis. All right. So, coming back to this equations, now you can write S s over L s. So, how much amount of charcoals or adsorbents are required per amount of solvent? This should be, this is equal to y 0 minus y 1 and here you have x 1 minus x 0, but let us say x 0 is very small amount, very 0. You have fresh 
uh, adsorbents okay or this amount is much larger than x0 in reality as you said you take the spent solid and regenerate and bring it back to the adsorber okay but in that process there will be some amount of solute there so, but the solute will be much smaller than your this concentrations spent solid concentrations so now you can write as y0 minus y1 and if the stage is ideal or you have given enough time then y1 you can write as m1 m into x1 to the power n essentially this line this coordinates of y1 x1 they lie on this equilibrium curve so we can replace here x1 with y1 over m to the power 1 over n so this would be the most simplest or the basis basic uh, equation for one stage adsorptions so let's go back to this equation what is given we have been given a feed which concentration is y0 we have been asked to bring down this concentration of say color from y0 to y1 we have been given the amount of uh, this liquid is ls to do this we are bringing in contact with some charcoal SS question is how much amount of charcoal is required this charcoal is fresh x0 is 0 after adsorption this concentration will increase liquid phase will decrease solid will increase to x1 but we are not that much interested in knowing this uh, how much is the amount of x1 here so that's why we are replace x1 in terms of y1 and other parameters the properties of this isotherms slope of the curve and the power index here so y1 is known y0 is known m n they come from this equilibrium curve equations we can find out this ratios of ss over lss per 1000 kg of liquid how much amount of solid is required from here okay now look at the slope of the equilibrium curve we have y versus x and here we have m as a slope and n is the power of index now if n can assume different values that means when you plot y versus x isotherm will may be like this so when you plot like this or if you obtain your data like this all it means n is greater than 1 and you have a very favorable isotherm because this is gives a very large capacity very large amount of y can be removed by the solid look at the slope of the curve it's monotonically increasing very fast rising curve that means if you start with y0 it's a certain x0 slope of the curve is like this which is minus ls minus ss over ls now n is 1 that means you have y1 equal to mx 1 straight line you will have the slope like this straight line and this is n equal to 1 generally n equal to 1 to 2 it's known as moderately difficult separation or adsorption so n is greater than 1 everybody favors larger values of n the curve will be more and more increasing very sharp rise here n equal to 1 in that case the slope or the operating line will be straight line except it will end here similarly we can have n less than 1 so this is n less than 1 and it says it's a very poor adsorption it's very difficult to remove uh, from solute phase because look at the slope here keeps on decreasing here in this case of course you will have the slope like this so we have three cases depending upon type of isotherms y versus x n greater than 1 n equal to 1 n less than 1 n greater than 1 it is a favorable isotherms it is a very moderately difficult look at the slope ss by ls here also is minus ss by ls here also minus ss by ls for the same amount of ls you can see from here you require a very large amount of solids now we take multi stays so this is your single stays here now let us take if we have multi stays cross current adsorption okay so you have stage 1 
we have a stage 2 L s y 0 s s 1 first is s x 0 here spent solid is concentration is x 1. This is now your y 1 again bring in contact with the solid s s 2 say you have x 0 here same same concentration of uh, charcoals fresh adsorbents and after treatment s s 2 and here you have x 2 and the treated solid is treated solvent is y 2. Flow rate L s will remain the same throughout okay, because all you have solid free bases. So, L s is same here similarly S s 1, S s 1 is the same here S s 2 and S s 2 they remain unchanged only the mole fraction changes we, we are working on the solid free bases. Again for the stage 1 you can write a balance here y 0 minus y 1 equal to S s 1 x 1 minus x 0 let us say it is 0 for simplicity. So, fresh adsorbents. this equation you can write S s 1 how much amount of solid is required in stage 1 over the amount of solvent treated will be equal to y 0 minus y 1 over x 1, but x 1 you can write as y 1 over m to the power 1 over n. So, y 1 x 1 they are in equilibrium y 2 x 2 they are in equilibrium. Okay. Similarly, we can write down this balance for the second equations. Second stage we have S s 2 over L s this would be equal to y 1 minus y 2 over x 2, but x 2 we can write as y 2 over m to the power 1 over n. So, what we want to do here we want we may like to optimize total amount of solid s s equal to s s 1 plus s s 2. How much is the total amount of solid? Should we use a larger amount here or should we use smaller amount here? Okay. So, if you add the two amounts here one can write s s 1 plus s s 2 over l s alright. This will be equal to if you add these two and rearrange one can show that you will get m to the power 1 over n y 0 minus y 1 over y 1 to the power 1 over n plus you have y 1 minus y 2 over y 2 to the power 1 over n. Okay. So, one can optimize total amount of solvent solid is now S s over L s. How do we optimize? L s is fixed here, y 0 is fixed, y 1 is fixed sorry excuse me y 2 is fixed n is fixed, m is fixed. So, intermediate is your y 1 all right. So, all it means what is the total first stage should be use equal amount 50 percent of S s or should we have 40, 60 or 60, 40 that will decide what happens to this intermediate concentration. So, essentially one can differentiate mathematically d of S s over d of y 1, y 1 is intermediate, we can differentiate this equations to obtain an expressions for y 1 in terms of the known quantities. Okay. Before that let us plot graphically what we are trying to do here. So, we have this x y equilibrium curve here, let us say we are using n greater than 1 favorable isotherms, okay. y 0 is fixed, let us say x 0 is 0. So, fresh adsorbents. If we have, if we know the amount of solid in the stage 1, we can take that operating line and we can reach this intermediate concentrations y 1. So, this would be y 1, this would be x 1, all right. This will be the slope of the curve as minus s s 1 over l s. So, if we know this s s 1, yes, we can draw this operating line, this will intermediate concentration will be fixed at y 1. Okay. Unfortunately, we do not know. Let us assume that if this y 1 is known, then from here now I go to the second stage, take a different slope minus S s 2 over L s to come down to this desired level of y 2, for which we have this 
x 2. So, I can go back to the previous question we had y 0 is fixed, y 2 is fixed, we have been asked to reduce these concentrations, x 0 is fixed here. All right. So, these three quantities are known here, n is known, slope of the curve m is also known to us. Okay. We want to know how much is the amount of total amount of solids S s equals S s 1 plus S s 2 equal to what. All right, so, that is what we said that this y 1 is an intermediate quantity. If you fix any of this variable, suppose you fix y 1, you can go back to this, you can draw this line, then we will get, we can calculate from the slope how much is the amount of solid, amount of the solid required. Once we know y 1, we know y 2. Okay. From here again, y 2 and x 2, they are in equilibrium, the last stays, we fix this point, you connect this, you get S s 2 here. All right. So, any of these three quantities, y 1, S s 1 or S s 2, if we know, we can complete this discussion here. Mathematically, we go back to this, differentiate this equation, S s 1 plus S s 2 over L s over d y 1 equal to and set to 0 do this as an exercise to obtain an expressions for y 1 intermediate this quantity here over y 2 1 over n minus 1 over n y 0 y 1 equal to 1 minus 1 over n solve for y 1. Once you know for solve for y 1, you can calculate all S s 1, S s 2, x 2, x 1 everything. So, both either graphically all right, or by this differential equations, one can solve to optimize how much is the minimum amount of S s min required, what combinations actually, which will give you desired, not the minimum amount, the desired, desired amount of solid. So, that we obtain this y 2 concentrations and actually when you solve this of course, it looks like this an iteration here y 0 is fixed, y 2 is here. So, one has to solve this by trial and error or some numerical technique to obtain these values of y 1. Then you can go back and put the equation for the first stage and the second stage to obtain the other quantities. In some of the textbook, uh, they have also reported the solutions of y 1 over y 0 for different values of n. For example, Trebol reports graph very similar to this 0 to 1, 0 to 1. There you have different type of curve here for different values of n. So, n equal to let us say 10, very large, very high favorable to very small amount of n 0.2, which is non favorable. So, for everything they are reported here, uh, some log log plot from this also one can calculate this y 1. Okay. So, either graphically or already available plot like this or by mathematically one can solve for this cross current multi stage adsorptions. Okay. Uh, we begin with the next topic uh, which is counter current multi stage operation. Okay. Here also, so far in the cross current, we will have uh, some certain examples in the next class to address how much amount of solvent is required to bring down this level from say y 0 to y 1 okay. or given the number of stages, what is the final concentrations in the treated feed or how much is the amount of uptake here. All those we will take the example in the next class. Okay. So, let us continue with this counter current multi stage operations. Okay. So, which is also very similar to what you had in case of extractions. So, we have a stages like this, say stage 1, stage 2 and the last stage N p. So, you have solid or you have say solvent L s, essentially you have feed, but again you want to work on solid free basis. So, it is kg per second, mole fraction is y 0 free solid free basis kg of color or kg of adsorbate per kg of solvent. 
and then you have nomenclatures y 1, you have say y 2, you can have a break here, the last is n p. So, this would be y n p minus 1 and the treated feed will have the compositions mode fraction y n p. So, this is your final solution or final solvent and to do this you have done a broad S S adsorbent. This concentration is x n p plus 1, which could be 0 phase adsorbents or approximately 0. So, we have this x n p stays 2, this would be x 3, stays 1, this would be x 2 and finally, the exit concentration mole fraction is x 1. Okay. And we can always ask several questions like how many stages are required, different type of questions, how many stages are required given this L s given this S s from this level to this level or the question can we ask amount of adsorbent. So, one is to look at the degree of freedom what is given, what is not given or given this number of stages amount of adsorbent, what is the final concentrations one can achieve in the treated solid solvent. So, different questions can be phrased or rephrased in different manners. Okay. Now, how do we do this? So, we have the same similar treatment first is of course, one has to make an overall balance, overall material balance or overall species balance. So, there you have L s y 0 minus y n p equals S s x 1 minus x n p plus 1. So, this overall material balance and from this one can obtain S s by L s in expression in terms of the four boundary mole fractions x 1 minus x n p plus 1. All right. We can plot or we can explain graphically again y versus x. Let us say we have this equilibrium curve like this, we have now the operating line. So, what is the operating line? This connects your bulk phase concentrations y n p x 1 or x n p plus 1. Okay. So, starting from overall balance, if here this is y 0. So, we are talking of now stages 1, 2 and at the end we have x or n p. So, y 0 which is here and we have x 1 here. So, two phase concentration, two streams y 0 and now we have this x 1. We bring down to the level of, so this x 1 here. Now, the last here you have x n p plus 1, which could be very small. Let us say this is x n p plus 1. So, what you will obtain here it will be this y n p. So, that is the meaning of this operating line equation, the material balance y n p. And then you have all these stages, we assume that x 1 equilibrium with y 1. So, go to this x 1, you have this now y y 1. Once we know y 1, then from the operating line we can get x 2. So, this is x 2 All right, and so forth. Once we know x 2, we can further construct to obtain this on different stages, stage 1 and stage 2 etcetera. And if you recall, now in the beginning we said uh, um, in the class on absorptions or whenever you have this uh, counter current stays uh, processes, uh, there is a risk of pinch, right. All it means operating line wherever it intersects, uh, there will be pinch, the mass transfer will be 0 and we require infinite number of stages. So, from here of course, this will give how much amount of solid is required. S s over L a, but one has to also determine the minimum amount of adsorbent. All right. So, it is all we have to do is uh, redraw this curve say let us say y versus x and the treatment is same, we have been given y 0, we know the last stage y n p 
corresponding to which we have solid phase concentration x and p plus 1, which could be very small or very 0 here. And now, to find the minimum amount of adsorbent, we connect this. So, that is a line, straight line, which will give us 0 driving force here. We can obtain S s over L s minimum amount of solvent. From this, we can obtain, then we can have the operating S s over L s let us say 1.2 or 1.5 times the minimum amount. So, we can construct this to obtain the spin concentrations on the first stage which is x 1 here. And then we can reconstruct the different number of stages required once we know this operating line and once we know this equilibrium curve here. Again here one has to be careful with the shape of this isotherm. Let us say if we have isotherms like concave downward, then this is y 0 and let us say this is very small amount here x and p plus 1 and we are treating this fluid or this feed till y and p. If we draw this line here, then this S s over L s of course, this will give us uh, some amount of S s uh, amount of adjournment required, but then you have to be careful that there is a possibility of things becoming tangent. That means, you take this point and find the tangent or wherever it crosses, it touches this point here. That means, one is supposed to calculate this slope here. This slope will give us the minimum amount of adsorbent required. So, this is also very similar to the in case of absorption, when we had different type of solubility curve. And then, you get this x 1, which will give you the maximum concentration of your spent solid. All right. So, whether you have concave downward or concave upward, one has to do some inspection to see the curve and see where it makes a tangent here. Okay. Now, we move on to this and see how we can apply this Friendlich isotherm equations. So, what we will do now, we will set up the equations and So, we have two stages for simplicity, stage 1 and let us say we have stage 2 and we have this counter current operation. So, y 0, we have x 1, this is y 1, y 2, here we have x 3, which is nearly 0, this is x 2 here, amount of the solve, this adsorbent remains the same as S s, solid free basis and the amount of solvent here is a fixed, which is your L s. Okay. So, let us write down the expressions. Overall, of course, we can make a balance, say S s x 1 minus x 3, which is 0, L s y 0 minus y 2. So, whatever is, picked, whatever is lost here is picked up in this solid as an uptake but x 1 notice and y 1 they are in equilibrium. Okay. So, let us write down x 1 as y 1 over m to the power 1 over n. Similarly, we can write down for the third stage, for the second stage as S s over L s equal to y 0 minus y 2. So, what we are writing right now is same equations, if we substitute x 1 let us say in terms of y 1 in this equations and then we can write S s over L s as y 0 minus y 2 over x 1, which is y 1 over m to the power 1 over n. Okay. So, equation 1 is operating line, equation 2 equilibrium curve, the two together has given us this equations. The ratios of S s over L s y 0, y 2 they are known to us y 1 over m to the power 1 over n. This y 1 is not known this intermediate concentrations. Okay. Similarly, if you write down the balance for the let us say the second stage, then you will have L s y 1 minus y 2 equal to S s x 2 minus x 3, but x 3 is again 0. So, we have done the overall balance and now we are writing this balance for the second stage. Okay. 
So, here we can write S S X 2, again X 2 we can write in terms of y 2 over m to the power 1 over n. So, x 2 is in equilibrium with y 2. So, all we have done we have replaced solid phase concentration x 1 and x 2 in terms of corresponding y 1 and y 2. So, we have this second independent equations the two together again you have L s and you have S s here also we have S s and L s s one can substitute S s over L s to obtain. So, if you eliminate eliminating S s over L s, we can obtain this equation y 0 over y 2 minus 1. You should try this as an exercise y 1 over y 2 to the power 1 over n y 1 over y 2 minus 1. So, let us box this equation. From here, uh, we can solve y 1. All right. So, solve y 1 from this equation. In general, y 0 inlet concentration of the liquid to be treated and the exit concentration y 2 are known. So, from y 0, y 2 we can solve for y 1. Once we know y 1, we can solve for x 1, which is nothing but y 1 over m to the power 1 over n. And once we know x 1, we can go back to the equation 1 and we can solve for S s kg per second of solid required to treat this feed. All right. So, that is the usual procedures. Of course, going back to these equations, uh, this required some iteration here. All right. So, from the iterations one can solve y 1 the intermediate concentration. So, this y 1 is nothing but intermediate concentration and then in term from this number we get y 0, y 2 are known to us. We get x 1 from x 1 we can go back to the equation 1 and from there we can get this solvent. Now, let us mark all these points for two stays uh, contactor say y 0 we have x 1 we have go back to the previous schematic for two stages contactor we have y 1 x 2 and then we have y 2 and x 3. So, let us mark these points on the graph all right or we can solve graphically as well. So, we start from here we have this y versus x let us say this is the equilibrium diagram what is given to us. So, we have stage 1, stage 2, incoming stream y 0, y 1 and y 2 and we have S s. So, we have x 0, let us say x 0 is 0, we have x 2, we have x 1 and here we have L s. So, let us see this is y 0. So, y 0 is here, let us mark these points first and y 2 is given to us, x 0 is given to us. So, starting from y 2 and x 0, let us say this is y 2 and this coordinate here is x 0 which is 0. Now, now we know this is y 0 here much larger than y 2. So, this concentration is known to us, but notice here that we do not know the flow rate this S s here. In other words, the slope of the operating line which is S s over L s minus a negative slope for counter current stage processes, we do not know the amount of S s. In other words, this problem very similar to the previous uh, method which we had uh, which we tried to solve analytically, this requires iterations. In general, suppose you have this uh, counter current, we have this uh, slope here L G s. So, we have S s over L s. All right. So, if you have S s over we know the slope we can draw this line, but in general we do not know what is the amount of solvent. So, one has to do some iterations say start with y 2 and y 2 is in equilibrium with x 2. So, y 2 is in equilibrium with x 2 here. So, this would be the stage 1 knowing x 2 we know we can find out what is y 1 from the operating line. So, this is y 1 and this would be stage 1. So, we have the stage 1 here. All right. Once we know y 1, then y 1 and x 1 they are in equilibrium. 
So we have this x1 here, all right. And once we have x1, then from this operating line, we should get this y0. So look at this. If we don't get, you know, we don't have a correct estimate for slope here or the amount of solvent SS, then we get some values which is smaller than this. That means one we will have to adjust the values of slope to obtain exactly y0. All right. So in that case, going back to this slope, one will have to adjust the slope here. So it requires some iterations to obtain this two stages process where we have brought down the concentration of feed from y0 to y2 and the solid phase concentration has increased from x0 to x1 by two stages, stage 1 here and we have a stage 2 here. Now, there is another method of or another approach here. Suppose we have, let us say, redraw this graph here for two stages counter current process. So, here we have y0, we have y2 and let us know we know the amount of solvent here. So, we have from the slope we get x 1, this is S s over L s and here we have this y 1 and from the operating line we have this x 2. So, this is x 0 equal to 0, we said that we have stage 1. So, here we have this stage 1, let us say, let us say this is stage 1 and we have this is stage 2. Now, recall we said that in the previous class that this, this counter current stage processes can also be considered as series two cross current stages here. In other words, look at this y 0 and x 2, they are brought in contact. So, let us put it y 0 and x 2 like this, schematically we write like this. We have two output streams y 1 and x 1, which is in equilibrium. So, now we have y 1 and we have this x 1. Now, this y 1 goes to the second stage and comes in contact with x 0. So, now we are representing the same stage processes by cross current. All right. So, this y 1 come to this x 2 and now we have two streams leaving y 2 and x 2, but notice this x 2 goes back to the first stage. So, that means this is stage we can write like this. In other words, this two stage counter current process is equivalent to two stage cross current processes, where this stream x 2 uh, is brought back to the first stage as incoming stream. In other words, from this graph, one can also un, uh, do the same analysis, assuming that it is a cross current process. So, starting from say y 2, y 0, x 2. So, this is y 0 and x 2 this coordinate here. Now, you take a negative slope for cross current, for counter current we have S s over L s and for this uh, cross current, if you recall from a stoichiometry balance or a species balance, now you can draw this slope with the line as S s over L s, except this is non negative. And similarly, here we can have this x 2 and we can draw the second slope of the curve as S s over L s the amount of solvent is the same as the previous case. In other words, these are the first stage, this is the second stage, now we have put them as a cross current. Two methods are same and they must give you the same result. Starting from x 0, now we start from the first stage, we bring down to this level here y 1. Now, we bring in contact with this x 2, y 1 here, we bring in contacts with now x 2 here to bring back to the second stage, where we have this y 2 and x 2. Okay, so, y 1 and x 2 again they are in contact here to bring back this concentration level at y 2. All right. So, one can uh, also do this analysis or you have different interpretations, whether you have a counter current method or you have a cross current methods. Okay, now, we take an example of one stage and two stage adsorption process. All right. So, what we have here in this example, we have water which contains some dye or color okay, and then bring in contact with charcoal or carbon. All right. So, the equilibrium data the way it is given is kg carbon. So, how much amount of solid is required per kg of solutions. So, the way this experiment was done, we start with certain color. 
Now the color will also have certain units, say kg some units. That means one has measured this color, say by spectrophotometer, UV vis. So it has certain units. Okay. So kg units per kg of solutions. And for do, to 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 remove this color, we have brought this carbon here. So how much amount of carbon is required per kg of solutions? Okay. So the data is given like this. To begin with, the solutions has 9.6 units of color. Okay, so this is your the first data. You have starting with water, which contains 9.6 amount of color. Now in this, you add 0.001 kg of carbon. So your basis is let's say we have a feed, and we start with 1,000 kg of solutions. Okay, so per kg of solution has 9.6 units. And then you bring in contact with 0.001 amount of carbon per kg of solutions. Now, because of adsorptions, the color is now reduced to 8.6. You add some more, you have now 0.4 at equilibrium. Now, the color unit is 6.3. Similarly, you have this data here 0 0.008, 4.3, 0 0.02, 1.1, 1 0 0.7, here 0 0.04, and here you have 0 0.7. Okay. So, the question is uh, starting with 9.6, we want to, so y0 is let us say 9.6, we want to reduce to y1 equal to 0 0.96 and we have single stage and we have two stages. So, here stages are given, we have been asked to find out how much amount of solvent is required. So, this is a very previous case, right. Whenever you have been uh, given the stages and you are asked to find out solvent, the solution will require iterations. This is in general you must have noticed in the earlier class also. But if the amount of solvent is given, then how many stages are required, then it is a straightforward problem. So, here we will see that uh, graphically or analytically uh, how we calculate the amount of solvent. Okay. So, the first thing here is that we must convert this unit uh, the way we are we have done earlier. So, we have this y and x, where we write y as kg of say adsorbate. So, adsorbate is color here, either kg or we can have unit, some unit. So, here we have color. So, adsorbate per amount of solution. So, that is your y and here we have kg adsorbate, which is again your or unit, certain units of color per amount of carbon. So, this is a solid phase x and y is your liquid phase. Now, from this we are supposed to convert into this. All right. So, notice this is 2 9.6, 8.6, 6.3 which is same as this. We have 9.6, 8 8.6, 6.3, 4.3, 1.7, 0.7. So, the first of course, we leave it like this. So, now 9.6 has become 8.6 after we added 0.001 kg of carbon. That means, the amount at job is 9.6 minus 8.6 divided by 0 0.001. So, this would be the first data point which is in equilibrium with this liquid phase. Similarly, we have 6.3 here. So, in the starting with 9.6 minus 6.3, we brought in contact with 0 0.004 amount of kg, we have this number here and similarly etcetera. All these numbers, if you calculate, we have 1000, 825, 663, 395 and you have 223. Right. So, now we have y versus x diagram, which we can plot and since the variation is a lot, it is not a bad idea to plot on log log scale. All right. So, if you plot on log log scale 100 and here we have 1000, 0.6 for y the lowest units and here we have 10. So, essentially if you plot this data should and fit this friendly isotherms. So, if you take a slope here a log here log y equal to log m plus n of log x. So, on log log plot this line will be a straight line. So, essentially you have the data points which you have fitted by the friendly isotherms. From this slope, 
an intercept one can calculate you will see that n power is 1.66 and m is 8.9 10 to the power minus 5. So, now you have an isotherms which you can write as y star to represent equilibrium 8.9 10 to the power minus 5 x 1.66. So, you have k g of a jaw bit which is color here per k g of solutions. So, of course, you are writing your k g, but this is nothing but some units of color. Similarly, here you have this x which is again some k g or you have units of adsorbate per k g of carbon. Now, also notice this that uh, when we write solutions and here this should have been a small y all right. Essentially, this nomenclature capital A Y and capital X we use for solute free basis, but here it is a very small amount of solutes. So, approximately Y has been approximated as capital Y X as capital X all right. One can still work on a small Y and a small X, but without much of improvement in the accuracies. So, whenever we have the dilute solutions uh, we have seen in the case of absorption also that in general one can still use capital Y and capital X and get a straight line for both equilibrium as well as the operating line. So, after this we get N M we have the isotherms Friendish isotherms now we can start making the species balance or we can draw the operating line. So, let us say that we have single stays. all right. So, it is a very straightforward problem now we have stays 1 we have the solutions say L s either you put it k g per second or just k g this contains color which is 9.6 bring in contact with certain amount of solid carbon which is x 0 here all right x 0 is 0 let us say pure carbon we have pure charcoal and after treatment we have S s and this unit is x 1 and the solvent re reduced this flow rate is L s but the concentration is now y 1 equal to 0 0.96 kg or unit of color per amount of solvent. Of course, solvent or solution we are assuming that it is a dilute system okay. and we notice that x 1 is an equilibrium with y 1. So, it is given by operating uh, by the equilibrium curve and we just write down a simple material balance here species balance you have x 1 equal to L s y 0 minus y 1 s s we have to find out x 0 is 0 here L s is given 1000 kg per 1000 kg of sol solution or solvent we have y 0 is given to us y 1 is given to us we have two unknowns here s s and x 1, but you must realize that x 1 is in equilibrium with y 1. So, we have y 1 equal to m x 1 to the power n friend rich isotherms. So, x x 1 equal to y 1 which is 0 0.96 over 8.9 to the power 10 to the power minus 5 to this power 1 over 1.66. So, that is n and if you do this calculations you will get 260 units. So, again this x 1 says your 260 of mass this color a job in this carbon solid phase okay and s s will be equal to 0 0.032 x 0 is 0 here into 1000 this is your 32 kg of carbon all right so this calculation can also be done here x 1 minus x 0 so, we have calculated now we know L s y 0 minus y 1 we can put this equations to obtain S s equal to 32 kg of carbon all right. Notice here that if you plot on the graph then y 1 is 0.96 here if you read from directly from the graph you should be able to obtain this 260. So, this is x this is y and here without solving all it means one can if we have plotted the graph we can read from the graph to obtain this values of x 1 step for y 1 all right. So, more important now is the second stage let us say that we are using two stages counter current process. 
So, now we have two stays counter current all right. You can recall we just now we said that if the stages are given and we are asked to find out how much is the amount of solvent or solid solid here, then it requires iteration. We have seen in the earlier like, uh, in the earlier slide as well. So, let us see we can solve graphically as well as we can solve mathematically. Let us plot the graph first for our understanding. So, we have x, we have y, we have this equilibrium curve all right. Now, let us say it is a linear. So, here we have 0 to x, we can also plot on log log to make it uh, like this straight linear equations here, linear line here. So, let us say this is 0, this is 1000. Now, here we have 10. So, what is given here is two stages. Solution enters here with y 0, which is given to us. Y 1 is intermediate, we do not know. Y 2 is given to us 0 0.96 x 0 is known to us pure charcoal, x 1 is intermediate stage 1, stage 2 counting from left to right and here we have this x 2. So, x 2 is not known to us, x 1 is not known to us. L s we know 1000 kg of solutions, solvent the solid we do not know all right. So, these are the 3 uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 unknowns. So, we would be expecting we require 4, so 4 unknowns. So, we require four equations. Of course, we can go back and we can put down all the equations here. For example, L s y 0 minus y 1 first stays equal to S s x 2 minus x 1. Second stays L s y 1 minus y 2 equal to S s x 0 minus x 2. So, these are the two material balance or species balance for two stages, but y 1 here we have sorry this is x 2 and this is x 1. So, y 1 x 1 is an equilibrium. So, we have y 1 equal to m x 1 to the power n y 2 and x 2 are in equilibrium. So, we have y 2 equal to m x 2 to the power n. So, four unknowns and four equations we can solve this to obtain s s as what 12.8 kg of carbon is required per 1000 kg of solutions. As, as in comparison to what we had earlier 32 kg of carbon per 1000 kg of solutions. So, of course, two stages are much more efficient, but more important here is that when we say that we are going to solve analytically, you must realize that this is not a straight forward, it is non linear equations. So, in general we require some type of iterations here because if you want to substitute y 1 in terms of x 1, which was this intermediate here, you go back to this x 1, but s s is not known, then you are supposed to replace y 2 in terms of x 2 in the second equations, divide the two equations etcetera. You will get non linear equations, you can solve maybe by iterations. So, this iteration business should also appear on the graph here. Okay. So, as we have seen in the earlier also, say so start with say y 0. So, y 0 and here we have y 2. So, these are the two points known to us, x 0 is known to us. So, we can start from here, let us say y 2, which is 0 0.96 and this is 0 here. So, this coordinate is y 2 x 0. Now, we know y 1 incoming concentrations, which is 9.6, but we do not know the amount of the solvent. All we know there are two stages. So, if we know the amount of the solvent, of course, we can draw a line curve like this. All right which is positive slope or counter current, this should be equal to S s over L s, but we do not know S s. That means, we require iterations. Let us say we have made a good guess that all it means for this y 1 or oh sorry this is y 0 here, for this y 0 this concentration must be x 1. Okay. So, we do not know of course. So, all we know there are two stages. So, starting from y 2 x 0, now let us say y 2 is an equilibrium this is here uh, we have y 2 x 0. So, y 2 is in equilibrium with x 2. So, we have this x 2. x 2 extend to the operating line we get y 1 and y 1 x 1 they are in equilibrium we will get this x 1 exactly here. So, this is stage 1 
and this is stage 2. All right, or if you can't do the counting from here, this is stage 1, this is stage 2. So, notice that if you have made a good guess, then of course, this will reach exactly at x 1 and this x 1 will be shown whatever we have got from the previous 260 etcetera, we should obtain from here. Okay. But uh, notice here, this x 1, uh, if you do not know the slope, then it might require iteration. That means, one has to go like this okay, and then see whether we get the correct values of y 0 or x 1. All here we know is only the x 0. So, this point is not known to us. So, when we start from here, the stage is not given to us. So, notice that if we suppose we make a first case like this, then we have this operating line. Now, x 2 is moved here. That is x 2 prime and this x 2 prime and y 1. Now, given this, we will get some other x 1 prime here. All right. So, this required some iterations. We may not be able to achieve the same y 0, what we have obtained here. Maybe will be uh, first iterations, we will have y 0 prime here. One has to adjust the slope again back to this to obtain the correct uh, values at exactly at two stages where we have this x 1 here. If you put all these numbers here x 1, x 2, etcetera, this x 1 will be 675. Okay. So, from the slope here also one can obtain the values of S s, which is nothing but L s y 0 minus y 2 over x 1 minus x 0. So, that is a triangle uh, you have taken L s is 1000, y 0 is 9.6 minus 0 0.96 over 675 minus 0. All right. This will give us 12.8 kg of carbon per 1000 kg of solutions. So, again we want to make a note here that if the stages are not given to us, then it requires iterations starting from y and x. First, you are supposed to do is take the equilibrium curve and mark this what we know. So, y 0 is known here. All we know is y 1 and x 0, which is 0. That is it. All intermediate values y 1, x 2 after the first stage, they are unknown to us. All we know y 1 is in equilibrium with x 1 and y 2 which is the exit concentrations, which we have exit concentration here at sorry this is y 2, this is in equilibrium with x 2. So, first stage if we draw starting from here, say we get x 2. Now, we do not know the operating line, because we do not know the slope here, which is just s over l s. Let us say arbitrarily if we make a slope like this. So, if this is the correct slope, then from this x 2, we should obtain this y 1. So, this is stays 1 stays here. All right. So, this would be starting from the end. So, this is a second stays. Now, this y 1 is in equilibrium. So, we have this x 1. All right. But this x 1 now should give us y 0. So, if we extend this, now this should give us y 0, which we do not have y 0 prime. So, look at the error here. All right, or it means we are supposed to now increase the flow rate. So, G s by L s, the slope is S s by L s. So, now we increase the amount of G s. So, slope if increase and let us say if we increase like this, now restart the calculations from here y 2 x 2. Now, you go to this different levels of x 2. Now, you go to this level here. Now, we have y 1. Come back to this equilibrium take this extend here. Now, again if you extend, this has just exceeded y 0. So, that means somewhere in between we require this slope. All right. So, this requires iterations either you do graphically or if you do it uh, analytically. We have seen um, there is a non-linearity in the equations. However, if the number of stages are given, if you know there are two stages, how much amount of solvent is required, sorry other way around. If this amount of solvent is required, then if this amount of solvent is given, then we can draw this line and then we can find out how many stages are required to achieve this y 2. All right. So, this was the example uh, we have taken for single stays and for the double stays, second stays the adsorptions. Okay. Again, uh, we said in the previous lecture also that one can solve um, graphically or one can solve analytically. 
in an analytically when you solve you require some iterations if you solve graphically then one has to adjust the slope of the graph so you have the similar type of iterations okay uh, next lecture when we meet we will take some more example on the search options either for a single stage or multi multi or multi stage counter current or cross current before we start this back bed column which is a continuous back bed so we had two cases one is a stage wise and one is a continuous column back bed.